In the last section of chapter one, we want to talk about counting principles and the binomial theorem. Um, and we'll start with just the counting principles. And hopefully a little bit of, a bit of this might actually be familiar to you. You might have seen this in a previous math class. Um, but we want to start off with this notation, and that notation is n factorial, and it's written this way. And it's defined as the product of the integers from 1 to n. So n factorial, we would say, typically we actually write it starting at n. So we would say n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, and so on, all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1, right? So for example, 5 factorial, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and we get 120. 0 factorial is divine, defined to be 1, and that's something maybe I'll explain and kind of walk you through in class or in a different video if I have some time. And the domain of natural, of n, sorry, n factorial, is positive integers and 0. So I guess we would say natural numbers here. Right, so n needs to be a natural number for this to work. We don't really have an easily definable um, notation here for like, 0.5 factorial or like negative 3 factorial that, that just doesn't we don't have that So let's work with this factorial notation a little bit more and we want to practice simplifying this a little bit so 7 factorial divided by 5 factorial Let's start by expanding this a little bit. So 7 factorial is 7 times 6 times 5 all the way down to 1 right and 5 factorial is 5, 4, all the way down to 1. And I notice that I can cancel some things out here. I see that I've got 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1 in common, right? And I'm just left with 7 times 6, and I get 42. It's kind of a shortcut way to look at this, right? If you look at that notation again, right? 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. There's actually kind of a, there's a factorial within the factorial, right? At any point, I could really stop this and say, okay, it's 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 factorial, right? Because 4 factorial is just 4, 3, 2, 1. So in this cancellation, really, what we've got here is 7 times 6 times 5. 5 factorial, which is what actually allowed me to make that cancellation. I just showed it the long way to show it a little bit more clearly. So sometimes doing this might actually be useful, whether we come across it in a proof or in a similar problem to the one that you see here. We can work with this in general too. So again, it might be smart to expand a little bit. The n's going to stay as it is for now. And then if I expand that n plus 1 factorial, I'm going to get n plus 1 times n times n minus 1 times all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1. And one thing we might notice, if we actually apply our shortcut again here, is that this stretch here is just n factorial. And that all cancels out. And I'm left with n times n plus 1. And if you wanted to distribute it, you could, but you wouldn't have to. So we can actually work with this still in general, and we can work with it with actual numerical values as well. Either way, all kind of works out here. But just kind of a way to get us started thinking about factorials. Let's start to apply this a little more. And here's my example. Here's an investigation. So suppose we're in a band, and you're trying to put together a three-song EP but you don't know how to order the three songs that you want to put on the album. So how many ways could you do that? Well, I've got songs A and B and C, for example, and I could put them in all of these slots. We'll actually call them track A, track B, and track C. Well, if I've got my three songs, I could put any of the three songs in front as the, sorry, as track A. And I've already got a song there, so and I'm already using it, so I can't repeat the song. So I have two options for track B, and I have one option left then for track C, right? I've got two options already being used. In order to do this, we can multiply our options together to get six. And this is what we call the fundamental counting principle, this method of multiplying our options together. 
actually think it's I think it's the right principle. So how do we arrive at our answer? Well, we did it up here. Well, suppose we record a fourth song and we want to include that fourth song on the album. How many orderings are possible now? Well, I have four options. And I can put any of these four songs into my first um, track. I can put any three of the remaining songs into the second, any two of the remaining songs into the third, and then my last one's going to go last. And again, according to my fundamental counting principle, I can just multiply all these together, and I get 24. What about if I talk in general? How about for N songs? Well, let's see here. Oops. For N songs, I could put N of my songs in the first slot. I can put n minus one song, because I've already used the first song in the second slot, and n minus two, and I'm going to keep this process going until I get to three, two, one, and this should look familiar, because I just talked about it up here. That's our definition of n factorial, and sure enough, we're going to come back to that in a minute when we kind of summarize our findings, but the way we would order n songs into n, n spots, or n objects into n positions, is n factorial. So your band recorded eight songs and you want to pick three to put on the EP. How many orderings are possible if the ordering matters? Alright, well, again, I've got three songs, or sorry, three spots on the EP, call them A, B, and C. I have eight possible options. We can carry out our same logic. I have eight possible options for the first song. I have seven possible options for the second song. I have six possible options for the third song, and I get 336 possible ways I could order my song, my songs. So that's kind of how I did it. I just followed my same my same logic. All right. So suppose I want to include a fourth song. All right, we have eight options still in the first um, for the first track, and I have seven, and I have six. But now I have a five songs left to include as my fourth um, my fourth song in the album. So eight times seven times six times five, and I get sixteen eighty. Okay, great. Let's see if we can generalize this a bit. You want to select R songs from a list of n of them. Now, what you might have noticed is this, because this follows the same logic, you might have been inclined to say, well, this kind of looks a little bit like we're starting, whoops, we're starting with 8 factorial, except we're cutting off the 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 part, right, just to show that 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Well, we're trying to eliminate this part, and what we learned up here, up here, is that by dividing by another factorial, I can do that cancellation. So the way we could have canceled that out would be to divide by 4 factorial. And that would have given me the cancellation to give me what I needed. Well, where are we getting this 4 factorial from? It's not just the fourth song, the fact that we have 4 songs. Because we're not just eliminating three values here, right? In, the, in part A, we're eliminating five factorial. So how are we getting five factorial here if we had four below it? And we get it from taking the total number of songs I have to work with minus the number of songs that I want to include. So the way we would write this is n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. And this is going to be a really important formula for us when we talk about counting principles. So a permutation is an ordering of n objects. That's our, that's our vocabulary here. The number of orderings of n objects, assuming I'm doing them all, right, is given just by n factorial. That's just a blank, not division. The number of permutations of r objects from n distinct objects is given by the formula that we just came up with, but we're going to give it a name, or we're going to give it a symbol rather, and we have NPR, and it's kind of written on this diagonal, right? You've got N as a uh, superscript and R as a subscript. Um, this is an IB unique notation, 
Um, in previous classes, you might have seen it written like this. It means the same thing. We're just writing it a little bit differently in IB. And NPR is given by the formula that we just came up with. So this is going to be one of our important counting principle formulas. So we're going to start problem three here, and then I'll actually pick it up in the next video because I don't want it to get too, too long. Um, but here I've got that four students are running for three offices in student council, president, treasurer, and secretary. How many permutations are possible? All right, well, this is a job for NPR. I'm saying from four, pick three. Right, from four, pick three. And there actually is a, a function for this on your calculator. Again, it's something maybe I'll show you in class. Well, the setup for this problem is actually fairly straightforward because the numbers are kind of small. So I get four factorial over one factorial. So I just get four times three times two and I get 24. So there are 24 ways I could order these four students into three different positions in student council.